Hello, I'm Diana Bellchase, and I'm here with my good friend Art Taylor, who writes the most amazing short stories you've ever read. And they're so amazing that this man has won three consecutive Derringers and is today nominated for an Agatha for his short story, which is in Chesapeake Crimes, This Job is Murder. And because it's so good, it's actually the last one in the book. So if you're looking for it, that's where it is. Thank you for being here. No, thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about your short story. Okay. Uh, when Beauty Calls is about a uh, young woman who is a caretaker for an aging military veteran, um, a colonel, in fact, uh, who has in the stages of sort of pre-Alzheimer's. So she is very much a caretaker, makes dinner for him, stays with him at night, this sort of thing. They live in a remote uh, house in the woods. Um, and it's kind of an emotional time because uh, the, the family of the, the caretaker, uh, excuse me, of the colonel, is um, planning on selling the house, putting mm -hmm. him in a home, and so she's, she's got a lot of weight on her right now. Very sad. And then that weight becomes a, a different kind of trouble when one night uh, she thinks that someone may, someone may be watching the house and may in fact uh, have designs on uh, uh, something sinister mm -hmm. involving them. So she goes from being a caretaker to being potentially a defender of this man, a man who is accustomed to being able to take care of himself. So mm -hmm. a couple of different levels of, uh, you know, an, an emotional story, I hope, uh, a story about relationships, uh, but also a, a suspenseful tale, too. Very good. Um, you also wrote another story that I particularly love that won a flash fiction contest. What was the name of the contest? Um, it was, uh, it was originally, the story was originally published in Pank, uh, and then after it was, which is an online magazine, uh, and then went on to win an award from Press 53, a small independent press, but it's an anthology. Um, the story is uh, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, mm -hmm. uh, and it's structured as a recipe. Um, and there's kind of a, a funny story behind how this was written. Uh, I was at a Chicago concert that my wife took me to, and I'm not a fan uh, entirely. So, oh. unfortunately, <laughs> shh, don't tell anybody that. <laughs> but uh, as I was sitting there, not quite listening to the concert, I came up with the idea for the story, and so I wrote most of it in my head during the concert. And the next morning, sat down and, and wrote the rest of it out. It's set up as a recipe. It's about a, a woman who is uh, is upset that her husband is having an affair mm -hmm. and thinks about uh, poisoning. Him. So the, the structure of the recipe goes through the, their relationship and, and the story itself. I have to say, no pun intended, the story is delicious. <laughs> it really is. And it's up on Art's website, which is, what's your website? It's arttaylorwriter.com, arttaylorwriter.com. It's something definitely to follow. Now, you teach fiction at George Mason University? I do. I teach at George Mason. I teach in a couple of ways. I teach fiction workshops and creative nonfiction workshops. Uh, and I also teach lit classes uh, which look at, uh, at crime fiction, novels, um, teaching those as, for example, social documentary. What do we learn about the world of the 1920s or 1930s from reading Agatha Christie or Dorothy mm -hmm. Sayers or Dashiell Hammett? What do we learn about the civil rights movement from reading Chester Himes? Or looking at George Pelicanos, uh, you know, a, a book like Hard Revolution, that looks back at that era. So we, uh, you know, each semester that I, I teach this course, uh, we're looking at different books and different time periods. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been a lot of fun uh, for the kids, uh, you know, who are watching shows like CSI and Law and Order or whatever, mm -hmm. already interested in crime fiction in that way, and then broadening their interest uh, in, a, in a more, I guess, scholarly direction. Mm -hmm. so. Well, um, can you tell me what you think makes a good short story since you are wearing that Professor Yale cap on your head? <laughs> ah, well, uh, the, um, uh, the short story, you know, a lot of people say is, is, is a tough form to write. And I've had trouble I writing a novel. I, 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 I can't get the longer narrative arc and the series of conflicts uh, down in the pacing for myself. Well, um, I know why that is. Okay. Because you write so beautifully, succinctly, and to the point that expanding it would be a waste because you do it so beautifully. You have an economy of words that you tell the entire story so quickly that the rest of us have to expound in what you do in a few words. Well, I, I appreciate your saying that. That's a, a better twist on it than I would put. But uh, um, it's, uh, I do think that it's, it's a matter of a, of a short narrative arc trying to pack in a lot of information and look at an important, uh, you know, even down to a moment, but an important day, important evening, important couple of days. Uh, in, a, in a character's life and a real turning point. And I think as, as being able to focus on that so, uh, uh, you know, so, so completely on that moment 
um, is what makes a good short story and be able to turn around pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it does require you know being able to fold in a lot of additional information um, mm -hmm. in, in a short amount of space and, and when I'm reading a short story, I think that's what I'm looking for, is the sense of the larger world being presented uh, you know, through a very small window. So, do you have a favorite short story that you teach your students? Yeah, you know, there's a, a, a lot of short stories that I draw on at, at different times, and certainly we look back at, at some of the classics, you know, we, we, and, and this is not all mystery fiction, uh, but, but, you know, James Joyce is a favorite to look at, Flannery O'Connor is a favorite to look at. Um, I just read recently a story that, that has really stuck with me, and um, it's from uh, Karen Russell, who was a Pulitzer Prize uh, finalist for Swamplandia, had a new book of short stories come out um, uh, called uh, Vampires in the Lemon Grove. And the last story in there is, is a suspense story in its own way. It's called The, the Graveless Doll of Eric Mutis, and it's about a group of kids, 14-year-old boys, uh, who had, had basically uh, tormented and, and even tortured a, uh, a, a young newcomer to their school, uh, an, uh, an, epi an epileptic boy um, who uh, um, had, uh, had not quite fit in with their mm -hmm. group. Um, and after the, the child leaves school um, the, the following season, uh, they find a scarecrow in the woods that looks remarkably like him. And that scarecrow's existence uh, begins to haunt the narrator in interesting ways. And over the course of the story, you learn something about, you know, number one, about adolescent boys and how cruel that community can be, yes. uh, but also about the, you know, the weight of certain moral choices uh, that you make or immoral choices that you make and how to come to terms with that. It's a, a haunting and beautiful story and I think you know, really serves as, as what I was saying before, a chance to see a full world and a community and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and some emotional and, and moral issues in a very short amount of space. Well, I've got a very important question. Okay. You teach. Yes. I have taught. Have you ever thought of putting one of your students in, have you ever put one of your students into one of your murder stories? Uh, this, this time of the semester, <laughs> we're in the last weeks of the semester when I have 120, no exaggeration, essays to grade over the next two weeks. <laughs> I think about killing most of them. Uh, <laughs> but I have not yet put any into a story. There's still time. There's, There's still, still time. time. So beware, all of Art Taylor students, <laughs> if you don't <laughs> behave, you may be next. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Art's uh, short story is in the Chesapeake Crimes, This Job is Murder. Uh, the name of the story is When Duty Calls. It's the last one in the book. It's up for the Agatha, which I am sure you're going to win. Oh, I'm awesome. rooting for you, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having so, me. I appreciate it. Art Taylor, I'm Diana Belchase. Keep reading.